go over to uh, another independent comic from Digital Webbing called Team 14, number one. I believe the uh, tagline across the top says something like X Files meets Ghostbusters. I read through this as I'm supposed <clears throat> to. The artwork was good. It reminds me very much of Image. Yeah, this, this artwork looks like Mark Silvestri. It's not, but it looks like it. It's good artwork. It's very good. Um, I made a comment to Mike. I thought it was funny. Uh, I guess one of the things that reminded me of it being Image was it made me think of Michael Turner a little bit. It made me think, or not necessarily his artwork style, but the Fathom stuff, because blue is used very heavily throughout the whole comic. I might be being picky, but I picked up on that. Just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, the thing that I did not like about this comic, there is not one dialogue balloon in this entire comic. Nothing happens in this comic. No, nothing relevant happens. This an entire full-length comic of nothing but your little blue box backstory. The narration da, 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 the whole time. It's just... Now, that's not to say, though, that the story wasn't good. It, it was I liked interesting, the story. but to present it, it, all of your backstory, just bam, in one comic, and you have nothing actually happening. I think I would have been okay if this had been an issue zero. If this was an issue zero, where I'm not expecting to jump into action, I could have dealt with it. Or even so much of the stuff, they give you so much backstory in here that could have just been given gradually over the course of one or two actual comics, you know, where they're... As, you know, like, something's going on, and as a side note, throw in a little bit of backstory to tie the current story together. Hey, you see, though, I worry if they did that, this would turn into Batgirl, where we have two pages well, of heavily, heavy-handed dialogue that's just ham if you If you do it correctly, like, uh, comic companies have been doing it correctly for years. There's no reason they can't do it. I don't know why Batgirl did it. I mean, it was shipped on every page. But... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think this is the best way to do your issue one. No, I don't. There's a lot of information in this book. Um, some of the information in this book we didn't need yet. The shorthand was, for the friggin' different departments was. <laughs> well, like all of the data files at the very end of the book. Completely you, unnecessary because none of these characters did anything in the book. Yeah, you get information about characters that aren't even introduced in the first book. Yeah, like the ghost that one of the big baddies at the end of the book that they've got in storage. Well, I, I don't know that we ever saw him do anything in this book, and so why do we need to know about his personality? Why do we need to know about his history and what his plans are? I don't think we did. I think a lot of information was given to us too early, but overall the story is interesting, just presented in the wrong format. And they say it was a mix of X-Files and Ghostbusters, and that's very accurate, that's very I think. But the only thing they're taking from the Ghostbusters is, is the paranormal, you know, it, the ghosts and the spooks and that kind of thing, you know. What do you want them to take, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Land? No, I, they took that part from the Ghostbusters, and no, then sir. they made it all a government... I mean, yes, yeah, saying X-Files Ghostbusters was very accurate. The Ghostbusters thing gave me more hope. It took all the things that pretty much out X-Files I don't care about. With them saying Ghostbusters, did you hope that there was a little bit of humor or something? I, I was hope well, I was hoping there was going to be action of some type, some type of <laughs> plot or something. Getting past that, I mean, heck, there might be. We are presenting there, there nothing but informative exact. text. They're very well There could be. be a lot of stuff going on in issue two that'll make the book worth reading. But if you lose them at issue one, yeah, it doesn't look bad, and if you're good it looks for very good, if you're, if you're very good, if you're into history and how teams form and everything like that, you might like, enjoy this. I'm one of the people that in in this and every other thing I do, I'm all about backstories. You know, knowing what's going on, all that fun stuff. But this was it's well, this too, was 25 years or more of backstory. Well, let's move over to a lighter comic book from Marvel Comics called Scrolls vs. Power Pack, number one of four. As I said to Mike earlier, the last time I read anything that had the Power Pack in it, they were crossing over into an X-Men Classics comic. And how long has it been since X-Men Classics have been coming it's out? It's been a good number of years. And I've watched Franklin Richards age from the Onslaught thing to the current comics. Yet the Power Pack 
appearing in the X-Men classics to now have not aged one freaking day. Why would they? <sighs> you know, just... That, that, it's stupid, but that bugs me overall, though. Well, it's a good, lighthearted... Let me state that that shouldn't bug you, because this this tale is not set in current yeah, it's continuity. Not a, it's not a continuity no. heavy book. No, I think the Power Pack... I, I, I think they've had numerous miniseries throughout the last couple of years. I think they're pretty well entrenched in their own continuity. I don't think they have anything at all to do with real... I'm not real... even so, so sure that they're probably entrenched in their own continuity. <laughs> well, they are, a little bit, because... In this comic, has some of those nifty little footnotes from the editor on this book that refers you back to. Oh, remember when this happened back in this book? So, but that being said, I mean they try to take something that's happening in the regular Marvel universe right now and bring it into the book with the scrolls and all that. And for a, I view it as a kid's story. It was fun. It's lighthearted. I won't say kid's story. Yeah, for a lighthearted adventure. I, I did get a kick out of in the beginning, you know, you see the kids there and they're all getting along and everything's wonderful and happy mm -hmm. and she's like, the mother. you guys aren't fighting. Who are you and what have you done with my kids? She says it jokingly. She turns her back and one of them whips out a gun. He's like, no. he's like they know. No, 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 no. It's just calm down. Yeah, because then you find out they're scrolls. I mean, your mother probably said that to you at some point. My throughout. mom pulled a gun on me all the yeah, time. No, no, no. I meant that. <laughs> You're not my child. Who are you? You're being too good. I was told I wouldn't be allowed on our property if I wasn't theirs. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I kind of enjoyed the story. I mean, yeah, there are some things that I don't really understand, like the horse people and... The horse people creep me out. Is it Patchworld? I, yeah. I never dealt with any of that before so maybe I don't totally understand it but the horse guy creeped me out for the same reason that cat people creep me out the same reason that gingers <laughs> creep me out sorry that's just the way I feel Getting creeped out by the freaks of the universe. gingers horse people and cat people give me the willies just scare the crap out of me I couldn't enjoy that 70s show because I had a tall friggin giant like ginger on it <laughs> <laughs> my phobias aside <laughs> lock me in a small space because I'm claustrophobic with a ginger a horse person in the cabin. That would be <laughs> awesome. If you want to see that on next week's show, no. or whenever this gets put up, <laughs> leave no. a comment. <laughs>